Ha ha ha. Fun times. Can I zoom in? Oh yeah. Live benchmarking. Getting ready for the RTX 5090. Just wanted to try doing this. Let me know what you think. So, this is Final Fantasy 16, and this is the benchmark. Dodge that guy. Woo, woo, woo. I wonder how this looks. Is this streaming at 30 frames per second? I'm streaming from my iPhone because I don't want to interfere with, like, capturing data on the PC. This is more just a test. Is anyone interested in this stuff? Will they watch it after the fact? I don't know. I doubt anyone's going to watch live. It'll take me about, let's see. Uh, it's about a minute per run on Final Fantasy 16. And I need to do around 10 runs. So about 10 minutes long. I've got the Riva Tuner, Riva Tuner Statistics Server, whatever that's called, Riva Tuner Statistics Server, showing in the top left of the screen. Because that's up, the frame view information in the top right isn't visible, but it would disappear while benchmarking anyway. And someone's probably thinking, wait, doesn't Riva Tuner interfere with performance? Uh, I've checked it. It's less than 1%. So if you keep it running on everything, it's all good. So right now, testing RTX 4080 Super. Obviously, that has launched a while ago. And so none of what I'm doing is breaking embargo. 5090 and 5080 are all coming. We know this. NVIDIA has announced they will go on sale on January 30th. When will the reviews go live? Uh, I don't know if we're supposed to say. Traditionally, NVIDIA has said you can post reviews of the Founders Edition the day before the sales go live, and then reviews of partner cards can go live on the day of the launch. Something else I want to say here while I'm streaming this is if you want a 5090 or even a 5080 card, you might need to get in line. And I know they're $2,000, $1,000. That's the base price. There will probably be a lot more expensive models. But consider the entire market right now. There's a ton of interest in AI. Whether or not you think it's useful is beside the point. There are big businesses that are interested in AI. And that's important because NVIDIA has already sold off their entire allocation of B200 Blackwell chips for 2025. Those are the things that are probably selling at like 50,000 or more per chip. Well, dual chip, I don't know. I, I haven't seen the exact math, but it's a lot. Here you can see the settings I'm using. Turn off, upscaling, and frame generation. We're not doing that stuff, not for my baseline performance. I don't want motion blur. I don't want vignette. I don't want chromatic aberration. Those actually, to me, just detract. Some people like vignette, some don't. Some people like motion blur, some don't. Chromatic aberration makes like the edges of the screen kind of blurrier, irritates the heck out of me. So I turn them off and they don't really affect performance, like really don't affect performance. Maybe a 1% drop in performance with all three of those enabled. I just do it because of aesthetic reasons. I like the way games look better without it. Did you see that big drop in performance when I turned on ultra mode rather than the mid mode or the medium or middle or whatever it's called in this game? Also look at that frame time chart in the corner. That's kind of fun. That's why I like having RTSS running is that it allows you to see how the frame pacing is going. And what you'll notice is this particular game, there's a lot of little spikes. That's not 
something that NVIDIA is doing wrong with their drivers, as far as I know. This is something in the game, it's really kind of a sluggish beast of a game. Three tests down, 1080p medium done, 1080p middle on this one. Going up to 1080p ultra, that's one test down. Do, do, do. I don't even know what this called my video. Did I give it a caption? Probably no one's watching. Uh, I, I can see no one's watching. I think I can edit the name afterwards. So this is gonna be like live streaming benchmarks of RTX 4080 Super in Final Fantasy 16. Woohoo, awesome. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, let's go back and talk about that. They sold their entire allocation of B200 cards for 2025. Hundreds of thousands of cards, maybe, maybe not cards, but chips, maybe over a million. Uh, that's a lot, right? Especially since each of those is probably going to cost upward of $40,000. Like the H200 cost around thirty to $40,000 were the prices I would kind of see. He didn't really buy them individually though, so it's hard to really know. The, the B200 should basically be Maybe not twice as expensive, but it will definitely be more expensive. And again, they've already sold out their allocation for 2025. So what does that mean for GeForce cards? Like, think about that for a minute. $2,000, oh no, the RTX 5090 is so expensive. And they've sold out of their $50,000 GPUs for the year. So what should they do from TSMC? Should they use more wafers to create GB202? Or they should, should they use those wafers to create GB200? That should be a no-brainer, basically, as a business decision. So they've almost certainly allocated a, a number of wafers toward the GeForce and gaming slash professional lines. But they don't have a good reason to be like, hey, we need to increase production on 5090 and 5080 as much as possible because gamers want them when gamers are paying way less than your big data centers and Elon Musk's and all that stuff. Uh, I heard a rumor. I heard it from a friend who, heard it from a friend who, Heard it from another, you're not going to buy a 5090. Uh, I was making up the lyrics, obviously. Apologies for the singing. But I have heard from an industry contact that there's a major retail chain that we've all heard of. And it's not Best Buy, so that might be a factor. But this retail chain has received supposedly only a handful of 5090 cards for the initial launch. It is two weeks away, maybe not quite two weeks now, a little less, but maybe more cards will arrive before then. Maybe hundreds will be on their way, I don't know. Maybe they told my contact, this company told my contact this information because he wanted to buy three 5090 cards, one for his use, one for work, one for, I don't know, something else to have a spare, to sell to a friend, whatever. Uh, the point being, you would expect a company like this to maybe get hundreds or thousands if they were readily available and supposedly just a handful are coming. I'm not going to say the number that they gave me. It's less than thousands and even less than a hundred for all their locations throughout the United States. Because they're not Best Buy, maybe all the Founders Edition 5090 cards are going to Best Buy. I think that's what they're doing these days. They were the exclusive partner for Founders Edition cards on the 40 series. That kind of became a thing during the 30 series because scalpers were taking advantage of the 30 series purchases off of NVIDIA, so they turned it all over to Best Buy. I am sure money changed hands for that as well. 
But the point is, Best Buy could be getting all the 4090, sorry, 5090 Founders Edition and 5080 Founders Edition cards. And NVIDIA may have allocated most of the initial GPUs to their own Founders Edition rather than to partner cards. So that might be why this other retail outlet isn't getting as many as you would expect. But also, there may just not be that many cards because, like I said, NVIDIA would like to make more B200 cards, NV32 or NV72L rack cabinets that it can sell for millions of dollars. Those dwarf the potential income even at $2,000 a piece of the RTX 5090. So if you want an RTX 5090, you might be waiting a while. Hey, I've got a viewer. Hi, viewer. Sorry I didn't caption this. You can see who I am. I'm not going to say it in the video just because. I'm finishing up my Final Fantasy 16 retesting in preparation for the 5090-5080 launch. This is the 4080 Super. 4080 would be virtually identical performance, so I don't have time, so I'm not going to retest that. And why am I using a 13900K? Why not the new system? Well, the new system's doing other stuff, and I want to have some reference from old and new. So that's why. Anyway, that's it. That's it for Final Fantasy 16. That's it for my thoughts on the GeForce availability that we're likely to see. It's not gonna be good, people. That's my guess. I could be wrong. I have no hard knowledge. I just know that it would be silly to make a ton of gamer cards when you can sell your data center cards for much more money. And thus, I am sure scalping will be a major, major thing with the 5090. Good luck. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Do whatever you want. I'm going to go offline again. Do you like these live streams of me running benchmarks? Let me know. I could do it more often. It might get old for me to keep talking, but let me know. See you later, viewer. Bye.